go ahead and get started. Okay. Hi. Hi. My name is Matt. I'm a student pharmacist. Uh, today I just want to talk to you a little bit about a new medication that uh, you brought into the pharmacy. Just want to talk to you about what it's for, um, how it can help, and then address any questions that you might have. Okay. Could be about five minutes. Is that going to be okay? Sure. Okay. So can you confirm the patient that we're picking up for today? Um, it's for my husband, Robert Stark. Okay, excellent. You said it's your husband. Mm -hmm. um, so what do you know about the medication that he's picking up? Uh, that he's too embarrassed to come get it, so I had to come get it. Okay. Now, to help you out a little bit, this is a very common medication, um, and as well as, as his wife. I would uh, encourage you to let him know that this is a very normal thing uh, for a lot of patients, so it's nothing to be ashamed of. The name of the medication is Cialis. Um, do you know what it's going to be used for? To improve our sex life, apparently. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a very common indication for the medication, um, and it works quite well for a lot of people that take it, so that is encouraging. Uh, again, it's called Cialis. It's a 10 milligram tablet. Looks like he has a quantity of 10. Uh, the doctor encouraged him to take one tablet by mouth as directed. Um, so what that's going to look like is about 30 minutes before any sexual activity. Um, can take a little bit for the effects to really start to work. Uh, what he's going to want to do is just limit himself to just one tablet per day. So if he finds that he's not having the desired effect after he takes it, let the doctor know about that afterwards instead of trying to take another tablet. Does okay. that make sense? Yep. Okay. And does he have any issues swallowing tablets at all or anything? No. Okay. Did the doctor uh, explain to you any adverse effects or anything to be on the lookout for? I don't know. I wasn't there. Okay, so it was all just your husband that mm -hmm. was there at the time. Okay, so some common adverse effects with this medication could be flushing, so maybe some like redness in the face a little bit, uh, or a headache, potentially some abdominal pain as well. Um, some more serious side effects to look out for is kind of extreme drowsiness or uh, what's known as hypotension, which is low blood pressure. So the way this medication works is it uh, kind of opens up the blood vessels a little bit, um, and displaces it to another area to um, improve performance um, in this regard. So uh, because of the way that the medication works naturally, it can cause a little bit of a drop in blood pressure. So that's why he's going to want to look out again for that drowsiness kind of feeling, maybe a little bit out of it if the blood isn't fully circulating throughout his body. So make sure to communicate that with him to make sure that he's fully aware um, and that he's not, um, the medication isn't causing any poor reactions out of him. Okay. Now, um, I did see on his profile that he's taking amlodipine. Mm -hmm. Does that sound familiar? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, this one often is used for blood pressure and can lower his levels. Um, just, again, reinforce that this hypotension, this low blood pressure side effects of drowsiness and things like that can uh, be amplified with his new medication. So, again, just make sure he's fully aware. Um, and that's another important reason why he shouldn't take more than one tablet. Again, because having both medications having somewhat of a blood pressure lowering effect uh, you wouldn't want it to get too severe. Does that make sense? Uh-huh. So is this going to mess with his blood pressure all the time? It's so... Because he's kind of well controlled now. Good. And this one, it can have a little bit of effect when he first starts to take it and on the days that he does take it. So here we have a quantity of 10. So um, it may be that he's not taking it every day and that can be variable. Uh, but it could have a bit of an effect on him on the days that he does take it. Okay. Um, the medication itself does have a fairly long half-life, meaning that it stays in the body for um, an extended period of time. So it could lower his uh, blood pressure um, for, for uh, those, that time that is still in, in the body. So it could have a little bit of a longer-term effect, depending on how often he is using the medication. So that's really important for him to just be monitoring it, and maybe an adjustment in dose may need to be necessary um, if he is having some poor effects or his blood pressure isn't well controlled. Okay. So uh, to reinforce that, I would say his current regimen should be fine, and he, I would imagine that he'll stay within comfortable levels, but it is important for him to be monitoring that. And if you like, uh, do you know, do you have a blood pressure cuff at home? Mm -hmm. Okay, so encourage him maybe to check a little bit more frequently, uh, especially after he takes this medication. Um, or if he is having any of those uh, side effects, drowsiness, you know, kind of confusion, things of that nature. Or he's also welcome to come in here and we can assess his blood pressure to see if a change of dose may be necessary. Again, I wouldn't ex uh, expect the, that effect to be too extreme for him. Okay. Okay. Um, with this one, uh, make sure he's just storing it at room temperature um, and ideally away from uh, anyone that might not be, that, that the medication is not necessarily indicated for. So are there any children at home? Yeah. Okay, um, so where does he, do you know where he currently stores his medications? In the top shelf of our kitchen cabinet. Okay, so is that something that's within reach of children? 
Well, we have teenagers. So. You do? Okay. Well, um, you could put that, that's a safe place for it, uh, but make sure you're communicating to the teenagers that uh, this isn't a medication for them. And if he wants to keep it in a more safe and secure place, that might be a conversation to have uh, just to ensure that it's not falling into the wrong hands. Okay. Um, something to note about this medication is that, believe it or not, grapefruit can kind of uh, adjust its levels a little bit. So does your husband consume grapefruit at all? No. Okay. Yeah, and I know that's not a huge thing with a lot of patients, but something worth noting. Um, one last part of the medication, um, a potential other medication that could counteract with it is nitrates, um, which are going to be used for chest pain. Again, similar to this medication to kind of open up the blood vessels. Um, has your husband had any um, past issues with like heart problems or no. Ever, ever heard of a nitrate being part of his, uh, his regimen at all? Yeah, no. Okay, then nothing to worry about there. Um, so that should be just fine. Um, so I know I've gone over quite a lot today. Uh, do you want to just repeat to me some of the things that you're taking away from this session? Um, he can take one a day. Um, might lower his blood pressure, right. so he needs to be careful with that. Mm -hmm. um, could last a couple days in the system. Mm -hmm. um, he has those effects probably need to get his blood pressure monitored. Yep, and if it's real severe, uh, make sure he does let a doctor know because um, we wouldn't want any further complications occurring from that. And again, um, there are no refills on this, so as he starts to uh, get a little low on it, he can contact us and we can contact the doctor. Okay. Or you're welcome to contact the doctor um, directly as well if that's most appropriate. Okay. Um, lastly, 